Yeah, hey everyone, it's uh, great to be here. I'm very excited to present our work on Gemmascope, an interpretability tool that we recently released. Gemmascope is a family of open sparse autoencoders, which are a specialized neural network. And sparse autoencoders can tell us what is going on inside a language model. So how does this work exactly? We start with some text inputs to Gemma, like where is the city of light? This gets processed by the model into an intermediate representation. We can then apply our sparse autoencoder on that representation and can see that French-related concepts show up. These are then used by the language model to predict the correct output, Paris. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. So we just saw that the language model uses uh, the input uh, and processes it into an intermediate representation vector. We can then think of this representation vector as being made up of a sparse linear combination of other vectors that correspond to human interpretable concepts. This idea is also called the linear representation hypothesis. In this particular uh, case, the representation vector could be the sum of a vector for France, um, a vector for the capital of a country, and so on. Um, importantly, there are many other concept vectors which do not contribute in this particular example what would be uh, present on other inputs. For example, a concept vector for Python code. So how do we disentangle this messy initial embedding vector into this neat sum of interpretable vectors? And how do we find these interpretable vectors in the first place? This is where sparse autoencoders come in. A sparse autoencoder, or SAE, is a simple two-layer feedforward network. Its training objective is to reconstruct the input activation. It consists of two parts, the encoder and the decoder. The encoder maps the input activations into a higher dimensional space by applying a linear transformation and then a value. However, in this new space, we only want a few dimensions to be non-zero at any given time. Each of these hidden dimensions then corresponds to a particular concept and co corresponds to whether the concept is active and how strongly it is active, if so. The decoder then takes a sparsely activated vector and uses it to reconstruct um, the original input activations. It's very important to note here that all of this works in a completely unsupervised fashion. Uh, we never tell the sparse autoencoder what kinds of concepts it should learn. So you might wonder whether all of this actually works in practice, whether we can even find anything human interpretable here. But empirically, that's exactly what we're seeing. For example, inside Gemmascope, we found this feature that activates on a whole range of English idioms, which means that the language model must have some abstract conception of what an idiom even is, some internal representation. Another one of my favorite features is this one found by some researchers at Anthropic. The feature is related to unsafe code and security practices, but it also activates on images of buttons that ask the user to proceed to potentially dangerous websites or to turn off safe browsing. So we've seen that sparse autoencoders can tell us what kind of features are already active in the language model. But what if we make a feature more active than it would normally be? This is a screenshot from the Neuronpedia website, who we are collaborating with, um, to host an interactive Gemmascope demo. I'm asking the model to um, give me a cake recipe, and I get an English response. So far, so good. However, if I use Gemmascope, I can get a cake recipe in Japanese. What I did here was select a feature that fired on Japanese text and made that feature much more strongly active than it would otherwise be. And this results in a model answering in Japanese to my English query without any fine tuning of the weights or system prompting or anything like that being necessary. And you can use the same trick with any number of concepts that you can find inside these SAEs. I haven't tried, but I'm pretty sure this would also work for Korean, for example. So let's come to Gemmascope itself. Gemmascope is a comprehensive suite of over 400 different sparse autoencoders on Gemma 2, 2B and 9B. This was enabled by our new state-of-the-art variant of the SAE architecture, where we replaced the standard value architecture with a discontinuous jump value and figured out how to stably train with this discontinuity by using straight-through estimators. If you'd like to learn more about this architecture, please check out the dedicated paper that we wrote on it. For Gemmascope, we trained quite a lot of autoencoders. For Gemma 2, 2B, and 9B, we trained multiple different SAEs on every single layer and every single sublayer location. 
we think that having SAEs at all of these locations unlocks the ability for researchers and developers to decode more complex algorithms inside Gemma, like chain of thought, via, for example, circuit style analysis. So we're particularly excited about enabling that kind of work. Gemmascope was actually a pretty big engineering effort for an interpretability tool. We trained thousands of sparse autoencoders in total, some of which were even almost as big as Gemma 2.9b itself. And this required 15% of the training compute, the pre-training compute for Gemma 2.9b. We also had to train on over 20 petabytes of activations. That's 20 million gigabytes. So we hope that by dealing with this upfront cost, we can unblock you to, uh, and enable lots of cool projects by the open source community. And now we get to the fun part. First, I recommend you check out the super easy to follow interactive demos on neuronpedia.org. They host a copy of Gemma 2 for you and will show you what kinds of features are active on your given input. But not only that, they also have a steering demo showcasing this causal nature of the learned SAE feature directions. You can chat with the model and uh, on the fly change its behavior simply by selecting one of the presets. They also have a highly customizable steering and exploration interface that I used to find this Japanese uh, text feature from earlier. Finally, if you'd like to use Gemmascope in a more open-ended way, you can find all of the SAEs on Hugging Face or can interact with them via the SAE Lens library uh, that provide a nice wrapper around them. Uh, one of our hopes uh, with this project is that we can enable lots of research and projects um, by the community. For example, can we use sparse autoencoders to detect and analyze jailbreaks and figure out what is actually going on there? Or maybe you can find the features that are most exciting to you and build an interactive dashboard for monitoring and intervention on the model. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more, please check out uh, this link to access all of the demos that I showed you or uh, scan the QR code. Uh, yeah, thank you so much.